Hi everybody, Ray Harwood here. I was the technical facilitator for this meeting on Saturday. And I just wanted to preface this recording to let you know that Paul Lamb was doing this recording from a cell phone and he'll describe to you his, his location and that sort of thing in a little bit. Um, but so the original presentation was not intended to include any video at all. But what I've done for this particular presentation for you is I've included scrolling on the screen the script of what he's going through, a particular meeting scenario. And down at the bottom, I've actually added a, a bit of text to track for you the, the motions and the amendments that are uh, being presented. Now, Paul makes a good point later on in his presentation in the Q&A session that it's very important for you to have some means of tracking the motions and the amendments as they're coming along during a meeting. And so imagine, if you will, you know, listening to Paul's scenario and not able to see the video presentation and trying to track where things are. Here we go. This second workshop is called Fun with Amendments, and um, the speaker asks that you have pen and paper handy. Our presenter is well known to us as Paul Lamb, PRPRCPT. Paul became a parliamentarian way back in 1993. He has been with Old Pueblo Unit ever since. Definitely loyalty there. Uh, at times, he has been president of Old Pueblo Unit, but mostly has been an educator in his own unit and with the ASAP members for many years. Paul has also been an educator with AIP, having earned the credentials of CPT. From 2004 to 2006, Paul served as the president of ASAP, and he is in the list of past presidents. So without further ado, Paul, we will have you do your presentation. And we all are anxious to see what you have to say and have our pens and pencils ready as requested. Okay. And hopefully the cell phone will hold up through the whole thing, but we'll see. And just so everybody knows, I live up in the mountains outside of Bisbee at the tail end of a long string with a tin can on the end of it. And so I'm actually sitting on the porch right now because they get a better signal on the porch than I do inside the house. Okay, here we go. President, is there any new business? Alice, Madam President, President, Alice. Alice, I move that we paint the lounge and dining room blue. Sandy, second. President, it is moved and seconded that we paint the lounge and dining room blue. Is there any debate? Betty, Madam President, President, Betty. Betty, I move to amend the motion by striking out the words dining room and inserting the words ballroom and conservatory. Sandy, second. President. It is moved and seconded to amend the main motion by striking out the words dining room and asserting the words ballroom and conservatory. If adopted, the main motion would be that we paint the lounge and ballroom and conservatory blue. The question is on the amendment to strike out the words dining room and insert the words ballroom and conservatory. Is there any debate? Iris, Madam President. President, Iris, Iris, I move to add the word kitchen after the word dining room. Sandy, second. President, that motion is out of order. Charles, Madam President, President Charles, Charles, I move to amend the amendment by striking out the words ballroom and inserting the word library. Sandy, second. It is moved and seconded to amend the amendment by striking out the words ballroom and inserting the words library. If adopted, the primary amendment would be to strike out the words dining room and inserting the words library and conservatory. The question is on the amendment to strike out the words ballroom and insert the words library. Is there any debate? David, Madam President, President David, David, I move to strike out the words library and insert the words billiard room. Sandy, second. President, that motion is out of order. Uh, Francis, Madam President, President Francis, Francis, I move to strike out the words ballroom and create a blank. Sandy, second. President, it is moved and seconded to amend the primary amendment by striking out the words ballroom and creating a blank. If adopted, the primary amendment would be to strike out the words dining room, create a blank, and insert the words and conservatory. All in favor of creating a blank say aye, 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 aye. 
Fields opposed say no, no. The eyes have it and the blank is created. The first suggestion for filling the blank is ballroom and the second suggestion is library. Are there further suggestions? David, I suggest billiard room. President, billiard room has been suggested. Others, George, I suggest study. President, study has been suggested. Harriet, I suggest hall. President, hall has been suggested. Are there any other suggestions? The suggestions for filling the blank are ballroom, library, billiard room, study, and hall. We vote on them in the order until one of these receives a majority affirmative vote. All those in favor of ballroom say aye, aye. Those opposed say no, 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 no. The no's have it and ballroom is not selected. All those in favor of library say aye, 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 aye. Those opposed say no, no. The ayes have it and library has been selected to fill the blank. The primary amendment is now to strike out the words dining room and insert the words library and conservatory. Is there any debate? The question is on the amendment to strike out the words dining room and insert the words library and conservatory. All in favor say aye, 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 aye. Those opposed say no, no. The ayes have it, the amendment is adopted, and the question is now on the amended main motion that we paint the lounge and the library and conservatory blue. Is there any debate? The question is on the motion that we paint the lounge and library and conservatory blue. All in favor say aye, 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 aye. Those opposed say no, no. The ayes have it. The motion is adopted and the building committee is directed to arrange for the painting. Is there further new business? Okay. We just went through a segment of the meeting. My first question to you is, what was the fourth suggestion offered? I know you can't answer. I'm going to ask several questions and have you just answer them to yourself and then I will give you what I think are my answers. But the whole idea here is that, number one, if you are the parliamentarian helping the president out, and particularly if you happen to be the presiding officer themselves, you need to keep track of everything that was going on. And while we went through it rather quickly, your notes should reflect for you exactly what was happening at any point, how many motions we had, what the motions were, and who was doing what to whom. How about that? Now we'll see how close you came. Uh, okay. Iris offered an amendment to add kitchen to the words to be struck out. It was ruled out of order. Why? What we had there was a, a secondary amendment to the primary amendment, and the chair ruled it out of order. And the reason for that is that it was the half of the strikeout and insert motion. It was the strikeout portion, and it's difficult to strike out a word that's not there in the main motion. So adding kitchen to the list would have been an interesting ex exercise, and we would have been attempting to try to strike out a word that didn't exist. Ah, that may be the reason why primary amendments to strike out amendments uh, can only have as their secondary amendments amendments to strike out the words from the primary amendment, which is confusing to a lot of people, but makes sense if you take a look at it. I'll make a comment here at this point. I have discovered over the course of the years that most people, many, many people, have trouble visualizing amendments when they hear them just orally. Uh, Amending words seems to be a uh, better handled as a visual process, and so if it's if you expect to have at your meeting a lot of amendments, it might be nice if you had a visual display up there that could show what was going on. Uh, <clears throat> I'll tell you a quick story. Uh, I sat in at the very back of a uh, convention going on because since I wasn't a delegate, I couldn't get be up in front. And I watched one of my friends working on amending the bylaws and coming up with an amendment on the floor. And she did, and they voted on it, and it was adopted. And I waited to see what the secretary did when she modified the bylaws, and she dutifully put into the bylaws exactly what was adopted. What was adopted was 
that we would have a meeting to decide whether we would take this action at a meeting or by email. So the bylaws said you will hold a meeting to decide if you're going to hold a meeting. Uh, obviously not what was intended. Second question for you, or third one at this point. Is it okay to create a blank in the primary amendment? Yeah. There's nothing in the book that says you can't. There's nothing in the book that says you can. It's just kind of left up in the air. So why not? And we did. The question then follows, we, we had a primary amendment, which is what we modified to create the blank, and we had a secondary amendment. What happened to the secondary amendment when the, when the motion to create a blank was adopted? The, the secondary amendment evaporated. Its suggestion or its uh, a proposal became one of the suggestions for filling the blank. Complicated, fun, having, you know, jumping up and down and doing whatever. Ah. So the last question is, do things get this complicated in the real world? And my answer to that is only at meetings of parliamentarians. And I've been at a few where you would have wondered what was going on. I can take questions, I guess, if you've got any that you want. I just thought this would be an interesting little game to play with, with a you know, s simple little uh, exercise in taking care of amendments and, uh, and just seeing what was going on and what could happen. I have a question. Yeah. Well, it's not so much a question. It's kind of how we talked about it when we reviewed this at the old Pueblo unit about who can suggest doing a uh, list. Who can suggest that? The chair can do it, or does it have to be a motion to create the list? I've lost the my blank. word. The blanks. The blanks. The yeah. blank. The blank. So the blank. We, yeah, we talked about it in, in the meeting. Who uh, Does it have to be a motion? I know the answer, but go ahead. <laughs> Uh, actually, the book says, says there are three ways to do it. We'll go down the list. We did it one way, and that way is that a member made a motion to strike out a word and create a blank. Uh, the question you might ask is that in the way we did it in this little skit that we just went through, is that would have been a secondary amendment, and we already had a secondary amendment on the floor. So you might scratch your head and say, wait a minute, that's a new secondary amendment. If you read the book, it sort of waffles the words to the fact that it's kind of a, uh, a device as opposed to a motion and therefore probably would work. So one of the ways to do it is with a motion to actually, you know, strike out some words in the whatever's pending and create a blank that would then be filled with words uh, or, or the list as you do, are trying to, to come up with it. Uh, the second way is if the chair recognizes that that's happening, and this chair could have, instead of just ruling out the one uh, amendment that was offering a, a, another choice of words, uh, but turn around and say, it sounds to me like we are really ought to be playing with uh, having a blank, and then it, the answer is it really has to be a motion, but at this point the chair can offer it as a, if there is no objection, we'll do it, which makes it a, uh, if you will, an invisible motion without a second and, uh, and without a real vote on it, and it just sort of kind of happens. The third way, which is kind of interesting when you think about it, is that the motion could have been presented the main motion could have been presented uh, with a blank in it. So, you know, if you think what you want to put in that spot is one choice, but there might be other choices by other members, you can actually make the motion uh, with the blank in it. So in this case, since the motion was the, was the primary amendment, it could be the strikeout, the blah, blah words, and insert 
the words uh, blank and uh, conservatory. And then the, the chair could then work with uh, doing it with a blank. Now, if it's done that way, the, the book sort of implies that you don't really vote on whether you want to create the blank. Uh, it's because it's part of the motion that's being offered. Interesting, right? Where do you, where do you find the, the section in the book on filling the blank? Under amendments. Yeah, and it's a device. Now, the other aspect of this, which I th think is kind of interesting to consider, and that is when you look at the book, and the book says the suggestions are debatable. So in our little quick skit here, we had five suggestions. How do we go about debating them? The book sort of puts a period on the sentence that says they are debatable, period, and then doesn't bother to say anything more. So there's two ways to go about it. Um, the wording in the book is a little vague in that it sort of implies, somewhat implies, that you would treat each suggestion as a separate entity in that the debate would be only on that one item. So in our case where we had uh, a list of five suggestions, we would then go through the suggestions and we would consider them uh, one at a time. So when the question comes up, uh, we will vote on them in the order until one receives a majority affirmative vote. The first suggestion is ballroom. Is there any debate? And then the debate would be on whether ballroom ought to fill the blank. And the debate if you think about it in the terms of what we normally talk about for debate, the debate needs to be germane to the motion, or in this case to the suggestion, and therefore the debate would probably not discuss the other four choices, but only the, the pros and cons of the ballroom. And then when the ballroom is voted down, the next one would be the library. Is there any debate? And again, we would debate each of these items one at a time uh, until one of them receives the majority vote. The other option would be to throw all the suggestions up in the air at one time and debate them all simultaneously, which would mean that you could then turn around and do comparisons such as the ballroom was painted only two years ago, but the library has been was, was five years ago, and therefore the library needs to be painted more than the ballroom. And, and that way you could do some comparisons uh, in your debate between the suggestions or among the suggestions. Would that violate the principle of one thing at a time? They're all one thing, because the, the one thing that the, at the time is the blank. But you're discussing different items, I guess. I guess it's a matter of how you aggregate the items, whether it's one thing at a time. Well, yeah, but I, as I, as the, base, the basis is the one thing that we're trying to do is to fill the blank. So you could consider it on, on that basis that there's only one task at hand, which is to fill the blank. Okay. So that's, you know, that, that's, that's to throw them all up in the air at one time. Uh, if you go the other approach, which would be to deal with them individually, you're still dealing with trying to find which one fills the blank, but you're you're trying to focus your attention one at a time on the on the list. Which, if you think about it, one of the things that one of the bad features of that sort of approach is that the poor person who made the the fifth suggestion down there that, that they suggested the hall they don't get a chance to explain why it is they thought the hall is the one that ought to be in fill the blank because the hall doesn't ever come up under the do it one at a time. Now, for those of you who have been around long enough to, to know me from mucho years back, if this was an in-person meeting, 
Uh, you could probably have a picture up in the front of the room, the clothesline with my little cards on it so that you could see what was going on and you could see. But how many of you had trouble taking notes of the, of the whole meeting? Uh huh. I know. Don't, don't raise your hand. I don't want to know. Uh, okay. There you are, Madam President. I give the, uh, the remaining time back to you. Well, thank you. Are there any further questions for Paul? That was something very yeah. mindful that we really had to think about. Um, yeah. But do appreciate the, the information. And, uh, and now we'll go back and really delve into creating a blank because there are obviously <laughs> a lot more options than some of us realized in that kind of a situation. So thank you for that, yeah. Paul.